All right, let's take a look at another CSES math problem. Um, this is cool. We're going to see matrix exponentiation uh, to solve linear occurrences. So what's going on here? Uh, we have Fibonacci numbers, and we want to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. Um, you've probably seen these before. Wait, f of n is f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 1. So it goes 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. Uh, but we need to calculate n up to 10 to the 18. So it's pretty clear how to do this in linear time. Right? You just like fill out an array or something. Um, but obviously, we're never going to get to 10 to the 18 in linear time. Right? We can do like a billion operations per second, and 10 to the 18 is a billion billion. So that's definitely not going to work. Uh, but we can actually do this in logarithmic time um, with matrix exponentiation. And you can do this uh, for any linear occurrence. So the idea is, uh, so what's the idea? Okay, here's uh, the start of this. So we're going to have a vector, um, right, which represents sort of a current state, which is fn and fn minus 1. Um, and then we're going to construct some matrix M. Uh, and the point is that, so let's say Vn is n and n minus 1. And n times Vn is going to give us Vn plus 1, OK? Which is Fn plus 1 Fn. Uh, so let's suppose that we could find a matrix with this property. Uh, well, actually, first, let's show how to find the matrix. So that's part that's actually easier. Um, so what happens when you do matrix multiplication? Uh, you do row dot column. Right, so let's say Vn is a column vector. M is a 2 by 2 vector. So M is like A, B, C, D. Uh, N times Vn. Well, it's the first row times this column, so it's a times fn plus b times fn minus 1. It's the first entry. And the second entry is uh, c times fn plus b times fn minus 1. Right? And we want that to equal fn plus 1 and fn. OK, well, for c and d, it's actually pretty clear what to do. Um, you just put 1 in for c and 0 in for d. And that gives you fn. Uh, and to get fn plus 1, well, we know that fn plus 1 is fn plus fn minus 1. right? That's like the defining recurrence. So we can actually just put in 1 for a and b. Uh, and now m has this property. Right? If you apply m uh, to any um, to any like row, you know, column vector of Fibonacci numbers, you get like the next, the next ones. Uh, and so in particular, if you keep applying m, uh, right, that keeps repeating the operation. Right, so like, if you apply, if you multiply by m four times, uh, then you get b to the n plus four. Um, and by the way, you can actually compute, you know. Multiplication is uh, associative, so you can compute this in any order. You can compute m to the 4 first, and then m to the 4 takes n to n plus 4. Uh, so actually, to compute how to compute fn, well, take n to the m, n times b0, and now you have the n, which the second entry is f of n, uh, and we can compute n to the n in log time with exponentiation as squared. Right, remember this uh, from the very first math video, actually? Um, I'll just write it out for matrices. So this is, we're going to type def uh, some type for, ma for matrices. Um, Right, so if e is if so, we're computing a to the e. If e is one, we just from a. This is the magic case. If e is divisible by two, uh, then we return a squared to the e over two, and otherwise we return 
uh, a times a to the e minus 1. Right? So it's, it's actually exactly the same as exponential issues by squaring for numbers, uh, except that you need matrix multiplication instead of sort of normal multiplication. Um, and so this will allow us to raise our matrix to an arbitrary power and only logarithmically many multiplications, uh, because every other iteration we get this case where we get to divide e by 2. Right, if e is even, we're in this case, and if e is odd, then we subtract 1, and now it's even, and now we're in this case. Um, so that is uh, the idea here. So let's actually implement it so we can see that. Um, right, so the, the key... So in, the reason you could do this for like any linear recurrence is... You know, if it's a linear occurrence, you can fill in these values. Uh, you know, pick A and pick B like as the values in the recurrence. Um, if the recurrence depends on like three things, then you do you know a three by three matrix instead of a two by two matrix. Um, and the like other rows are always very simple because you just get to copy elements. Right, you already have F N. If you if we had. You know, if we had a three-element occurrence, we would want to do this, but you can get fn minus one from you know directly. Um, and anyway, we'll see that in some later problems. Uh, let's just finish this off for now. Um, matrix multiplication. Just what I need to know. Uh, a dot size. So using that is. So back to the vectors, right, a 2D array. Um, let's see. This is the way multiplication works for matrices is if you have an uh, right. The inner dimensions have to match, and then you get the outer dimensions as the result. And actually, the way that CIJ equals add, so we're going to need to do everything modulo, you know, this prime, because obviously Fibonacci 10 to the 18 is absolutely enormous. Uh, let's see, mol of AIK and BKJ. Typing my uh, braces. Okay, and so the key thing to know about matrix multiplication is that Cij is uh, the dot product, right, of the uh, ith row times the jth column. Right, the ith row of A times the jth column of B. Uh, so matrix multiplication, every entry is a dot product. Uh, there's n squared entries, so uh, that's why it's n cubed. Uh, in, our, uh, in our case, n is 2, right? We're just multiplying 2 by 2 matrices, so that'll be perfectly fine. Uh, we need to do the modular arithmetic um, framework. We actually do use add, right, because the dot product is the sum of n things. Um, and that's it, actually. Uh, right, so we said that uh, v was going to be a column vector, um, and it starts with fn and fn minus 1. Um, and I suppose uh, we'll just actually do b1, right, which is 1 and 0. Um, and we said that m was 1, 1, 1, 0. And we want to raise m to the n minus 1. Uh, okay, we might need to do special case some small values of n, right? Because we're going to multiply uh, m to the n minus 1 times d1 to get dn. So to make 
uh, this work, we need, we need a special case, uh, 0 and 1. But for 2, we should be fine. Because um, we, we do not handle any case where e is 0, uh, or e is minus 1 if n is 0. Um, so yeah, that should be it, actually. Uh, let's see. This is over a dot size. This is over a zero dot size. This is over b zero dot size. Uh, and ten should give us fifty-five. Okay, we're off by something. Um. Want to try and figure out. We should take the first element of Vn, because that's Fn. Sure. Okay. Actually, P0 is kind of weird, because you need to figure out what F of minus 1 is, then it's 1. But uh, it's maybe simpler to just start with V1. 10 gives us 55. This is not where I want to be. Cool. Runtime error. Amazing. Yeah. I did say zero and one are special cases. <laughs> Guess I should have tested them. Let's uh, let's try that again. Right, the problem is that we, we did output the right answer, but then we were running the general case code, which doesn't actually run. Cool, so this passes everything. Um, so yeah, this is actually a really, I think, cool and useful idea, uh, that you can turn any linear recurrence into a matrix, and then you can exponentiate that matrix in log time. Uh, and so you can compute um, sort of very high iterations of linear recurrences um, just with matrix uh, multiplication. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's that.